Hello there YouTube, summer is over, I can upload again, and hence I'm back. And to celebrate my return, I've got something quite useful and pretty cool for you today. Uh, just to show you, this is a flat wall, not connected to anything. And this is a completely disconnected enclosed unit. This is just my test um, demonstration rig, rather. So this is a wireless locking system and um, well signal sending system really using tripwire hooks so if I put some tripwire hooks on this rather nicely marked wall like this and this nothing happens but if we do them close enough together like so the door opens Removing the tripwire hooks is completely at your own choice. And this is just a rig with some of the features which I would expect would be needed with a system like this. However, everything aside from the basics is non-essential. Right, so I'm going to go over to the lock system and show you what happens. Okay then, this is a copy of the detector inside that test unit. I have a stripped down version of the test unit there if you want to look at it in the world save which will be uploaded. However, getting to the point, here we have what are essentially, this is a block update detector with a strangely long delay for resetting itself. Um, it will reset itself as when this piston is extended, as you see, the update of this redstone wire updates the piston head which causes it to retract. So this is a block update detector with an 8 tick delay. Now the reason for this is it allows you to update both of them at the same time and have them both on at the same time and here we just have an AND gate leading to this RS NOR latch which hasn't been reset. The reason to have two of them is as you can see some of the the um, block up date detectors are randomly extending and this is a feature or a problem rather with the whole tripwire messaging system. Anyway, if I put a tripwire hook on this block here, that block update detector triggers. If I put one on this block, the other block update detector triggers. Now the reason for this is, when you put down a tripwire hook, not next to string, it sends out a pulse 40 blocks, including its own block, in the direction it's facing. And the first opposite facing tripwire hook that it encounters receives a block update. And this is what causes the block update detector to go off and power like so. Now, the reason that they are periodically extending by themselves is that it seems that when the game randomly updates blocks within each chunk, like it does for dirt to turn the dirt into grass, it updates unattached tripwire hooks and causes a block update. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but evidently it's part of the code that we have to live with. So this is the reason why we have two of them for a lock at minimum. Because if we only had one for the lock, it would open itself incredibly quickly within you know, a couple of minutes. Uh, it's also not really safe if you want to detonate something at range or, I don't know, fire a cannon that was going to probably explode on itself. Anyway, this design here will last for about four hours without both of the updates triggering at the same time, which would cause whatever RS NOR latch or system you've got attached to it to turn on. However, after constructing the test rig and constructing the de-shelled version and this, I realized there was a slightly better way to construct this. Instead of 8 tick delays, this design, aside from using um, far less resources, uses 4 tick delays. And the advantage of this is it halves the time in which the 
second block update detector can trigger. Sorry, I'm just gonna. And that means that you double the amount of time, essentially, I believe, unless I've done my probabilities wrong, please inform me if I have, doubles the time that it takes for the entire detector to trip, which means this takes eight hours and it functions properly as normal. However, uh, as I just forgot there, you can't place the tripwire hooks individually, you literally have to do that. And there we go, that's activated. You could increase the length of these repeaters by one, and that would allow you to place them separately, but it would also make it slightly less secure. This is the design that I'm going to build in the tutorial section of this video. I shall have a link in the corner for you now, if you wish to go straight there. And this is the one I'd recommend using, because if the chunk is loaded for eight hours, um, then you're probably going to be in it. If, however, you are on an incredibly active area of a multiplayer server that's loaded a lot and you're not going on particularly frequently, this design's the one for you. This one will take about 20 days of continuous loading before it triggers once. Um, because of the extra tripwire hook requirement and it works as we can see the AND gate has activated and the RS null latch is set and I won't be making this but you will be able to find it in the world download and it's fairly awkward to make compared to the other two because it isn't symmetrical or at least almost symmetrical. Anyway, tutorial time. Okay, these in my hotbar are the materials which you will need to make a trip pulse detector, which is the name I'm giving to this build because it has no name as of yet. So obviously these won't reduce as I'm in creative, but anyway, I'll show you how to build it. Right, so we shall start off with the iron which you want to place like so, and then one block here, one block here, and the others want to be here. Now you want a repeater here on three ticks, and here on three ticks. Flipping these from side to side doesn't change anything at all. You want redstone dust here, 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 and at the end here. And now Redstone torches here, both of those, and here. Now we put the tripwire hooks in here, and it's going to be impossible to place the pistons without blocks really, so we shall put a one piston there with a block on the end of it, and another piston here, and a block on the end of it. The only thing left is a redstone torch on the end and you're done. That is fully functional. We can test this out. Uh, as a display these don't have to be at the same distance. Ah, okay. <laughs> For a display we are going to need to put an RS null latch here to check that a pulse was sent, otherwise we won't be able to tell. Of course, that was rather silly of me. Right, so if that latch turns on, it's working. There we go, it is working. And that is the demonstration for you folks. The only thing left to this video is that I'm going to go over here to the deshelled test example thing and show you some of the suggested features that I would use if I were constructing something with this locking facility. So first is this. Mark out blocks in front of your update detectors. It does give you slightly less room. Because if you put a 
tripwire hook on these blocks, when the pulse is sent out from one of the blocks over here, or two of them, uh, shall we reset this to make sure we can tell, if we send our pulse out from here, nothing happens. And the reason for this is the pulse causes a block update on this tripwire hook instead of the one behind it. So you have an effective lock system from the inside which is really handy. Um, for your exit button I would also suggest moving the blocks that the lock is placed on just so you don't lock yourself out uh, by accident. And if you're using a timer which will trip accidentally every four hours or eight hours or a, a short amount of time I would suggest in adding one of these this is a dispenser just full of some random stuff that you don't particularly want and every time that the door is opened this starts a five minute timer waiting for that item to despawn once the item despawns apologies this puts a one tick pulse out here and make sure that the door is locked. This means that even if you have a four hour or eight hour tripping timer, it'll only be open for five minutes or eight minutes in that time. I would also suggest not using iron doors because they're horrifically obvious. Use something like um, piston doors for this. A jeb door would be perfectly good because at that point you have no obvious button to open it, being that your tripwire hooks can be placed on any block you like doesn't necessarily have to be obvious as long as you know where they are and um, that would make a completely invisible base entrance provided that the person wasn't x-raying of course which we can't really account for. Uh, other than that I think that's... well I don't think there is anything other than that. That seems to be it for today. So I hope you all have a nice day. I surely will even with lectures and stuff having started again. See you around.